And I just did a movie, uh, Donnell Rollins, um, Ashley Classy. It's a little biopic piece about what happened to my life after the Chappelle show. Mm -hmm. Because the question that people always ask me after they act like they care about my life, they be like, Donnell, you doing? How's your mama doing? Your daddy doing all right? Your brothers, everybody good? Where's Dave? This is a question they always ask me. Do I think Dave is crazy? Mm -hmm. Anybody that gives $52 million back is not the most sane person. Mm -hmm. You might not be crazy, but that was some crazy ass shit that day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That day, I couldn't even see myself coming from the streets and going back home like, what happened today? Man, a white man tried to give me $62 million. Some niggas, they set me up with that bullshit. You can't do it, you son. Over $62 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nigga try to hit me with $62 million like I'm stupid. Man, I told nigga, keep their money. Nigga, I'm going to Africa. <laughs> How did the Chappelle show change your life? I think it changed my life as far as I said earlier, it gave me a platform for people to see what I was doing. You know, I hear some people make the argument, or oh, if it wasn't for Dave Chappelle, Donnell wouldn't be nothing, but it's kind of hard to, if somebody has talent, natural talent, you know, you never know what timeline you're gonna be working on. And I, I believe if you have work ethics and you keep going hard enough, you're gonna get a break. But you know, I just think it just gave me the right vehicle for people to see what I was doing. Example, 50 Cent's always been a talented rapper, one of the baddest motherfuckers out there. And not nobody knows how his journey would have went, but it definitely didn't hurt when you get endorsed by Eminem and Dr. Drake. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with this business. You can have all the nice um, fucking music you want, but if you ain't got no distribution deal for people to see it, you know what I'm saying? You're never gonna go nowhere. Right. So, you know, not to compare myself to the relationship that 50 had with Dr. Dre and him, but sometimes you need that vehicle where you can scream to the world and say, I told y'all motherfuckers I was this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it was. It's the rest is history, pretty much. Huh? I mean, it was history until my fucking decided that they don't want to do the show no more. You know? So are you salty at Dave about that? Nah, hell no. Nah. nah, I ain't salty. Nah. What do you think I'm mad at Dave, man? Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I ain't mean, mad at Dave. Ain't no reason to be mad at my fucking break out going into the third season ahead. You say I'm rich, bitch, when you weren't even rich, bitch. You think I'm mad about that shit? Dave, you know what? Let's clear the air. If you out there watching or listening to Distance 50, oh my God, I love you so much. You gave me an opportunity. Like, I can't go, I can't, I can't say enough how instrumental that was to my career. You gave me the platform to showcase what I've been doing for years and you're not a part of that show anymore, but I just wish one day we could get together, like maybe like cookies and milk or something like that, and just like chat it out like old chums, you know what I'm saying? Get back together, man. Let's get together like outcasts. Don't have two different things. Let's have one outcast, because we all know Big Boy without Dre is like Hocus without Pocus. There'll never be no more magic. No disrespect. I mean, as the group outcasts, because Andre is out wearing green trash bags or something somewhere. Beware of Erica Badu's snatch because you will have a different wardrobe 24 motherfucking hours. Erica Badu got the type of pussy to change your own dress code, nigga. <laughs> Call it dress code pussy. Nigga be wearing skinny jeans tank top, a uniform <laughs> hat. That shit Lady Gaga ain't got nothing on Erica Badu. Erica, I'm next, my next size shirt is gonna be a small and a medium, a medium. Give me some of that Erica Badu. Give me some of that Bobby Boo. But you make it sound as if you don't have Dave Chappelle's number, man. I don't have Dave Chappelle's number. Oh, you don't? African area codes are a lot longer than American area uh, codes. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to do country code, mm -hmm. you got to do city code, you got to do tribal code, you got to do, especially over there, you definitely got to do need water code and some type of lotion. And I couldn't remember that. I smoked weed on occasion. I think it was be it, seven, five, four, three. Two up one five four three two up one 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 five four three two up one and uh, wait a minute extension three four five one and one and five extension three and once you go through all that shit you get a reception to say this show is not here. Yeah. How did you even hook up with Dave to do the show, man? As you came up with him, uh... we both from the D.C. area. We started comedy in D.C. The person that really got me in the show, Neil Brennan, mm -hmm. oh, the, the white dude, the other white me. Okay. Yeah. Um. After him and Dave to have baked, he had sold like three scripts to Hollywood, right? He got the big money, but they wouldn't green light his project, so they basically just buying it, and it wasn't going anywhere. He wanted to direct, but he didn't have a body of work, mm -hmm. so he wrote a short, and he um, came to my manager. And he was like, you know, I always thought Donnie was funny. You think he'd be interested in doing this like passion project with me? Um, it's no money or whatever. So I, I did it. 
And at the time, I had just did the corner, mm-hmm. get ready to do the wire. I'm all excited. I think I'm just super desperate. You was on the wire too? Yeah, I was on the wire. I was Day Day Price. I was I'm sending Clay Davis' um, assistant. But Neil Brennan, I told him before we did the project, I said, if you have in a position where you can throw me a bone, do it. Mm-hmm. So four months later, he said, I'm working on this project. I'll let you know. Then maybe four months after that, he said, I'm doing this show. It's called Chappelle Show. And he put me on the show. So my real nigga on the show happens to be a, a Irish, Caucasian, um, white guy. Matt, your relationship with Charlie Murphy, what, what's going on with that right now? Well, me and Charlie Murphy cool, but I just want to let everybody out there know this. A big fan of Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy is the biggest liar in the fucking business. All right? He don't tell the truth about shit. All right? All them true Hollywood stories, nothing but lies. I hung out with him. He told me he was the first black astronaut before they was even black astronauts. He tried, this nigga lied to me. He tried to tell me he used to be light skinned. That's how much this nigga lied. Charlie Murphy went on national TV and said he used to be light skinned. Now, if you believe that, you believe any damn thing, son. He's a liar. He's a liar. Did Rick James never have? Ever. Did he play this basketball? This nigga sneaking Charlie. He never played nothing sports. He did some karate shit for like two years, he said, but I never seen him kick nothing. What about I ain't never see him break though? nothing. If you was a karate expert, uh-huh. somebody gonna know. Niggas gonna know. You know what I'm saying? Like, you eventually, you gonna hit one of these every once in a while, yeah, or kick, this thing ain't kick shit. He had an incident at a grambling <laughs> college, man. I heard about the incident. Like, now, Charlie's a liar, but in that situation, you know, you perform, yeah. sometimes shit happens. It happens. You know what I'm saying? But it's how you handle it. Now, Charlie's a liar, but the most gangster move I ever see in entertainment is to get the money back. All right, this is your, this is you guys' money, right? It's your money, it's your money. Tom C, all right? Y'all have it back. Good luck. Fuck you. Yeah, it wasn't a mean? real move. That, it I wasn't. It moved way better than Yeah, I got booed. You ever got a Jamaican boo? Nigga, I got my eye booed out. Oh, you, oh God. It's like, all right, then you got it hands down, yeah. son. That ain't, I thought the Jamaican what the boot black boo. That's a super boo. It don't matter how good a Joker story was that you, you want to tell. If you don't have the attention, ain't nobody paying attention. Mm. So I think I think he made, made a bad decision by not addressing that. Then it got to the point where it was too late. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And But them college crowds are like, the toughest shit because they want shit fast, they want it now, and if you don't do it, and all, I got a movie for and you, and it started with just a light, and I, I didn't, I, I ignored, no, it, it started with this, mm. <laughs> right? yo, this when Apollo was, yeah, you can tell because you hear one of these, mm. then you hear this, what this nigga talking about, man, mm. you know, mm. Right, and then what happened is somebody else would be like, did this nigga just say, eh? And then next thing you know, you got three, eh, eh, and then just, and once you get to that point, <laughs> it ain't nothing coming back. I try to start fights. You try to start? Yeah. I've done that too. Yeah. Bitch, I can't even remember. You don't talk no way. I want to fight. I don't want to, because at the end day, I was like, yo, nigga, I was trying to help you. I was just trying to help you show. No, you, you just. Help me get the fuck on stage. Yeah. Yeah, I try to start fights. I'm definitely talking about your mother, everybody close to you. You know what I'm saying? If I can put a hit out on your dog, shout out to Oprah. Nah, I wouldn't do that. Now, nah, Oprah, when you in a new car, I'm talking about 50s, I'm gangsta, tough ass dog. Yeah, you could have went on and said you put a hit out on Oprah. She don't want to be on one more year. A year of Oprah talking to shit about you on air is like three of your careers. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, yeah you my thing with my only issue. Oprah make everybody a doctor. I don't understand how Dr. Oz be putting people on the show and be dissing them. They be like, look at this. This is your body right here. If you don't stop eating what you're eating, you know, this is gonna be you in 40 years. Why he ain't never put Oprah up on the screen? Mm-hmm. What's in that body? Why, why he ain't never like, Oprah, for real, if you don't stop eating those pinkies and all that, this is you. You ain't gonna never be able to eat pussy again. Never, never. So come on, let's just be real with it. No disrespect to Oprah. No disrespect, man. Love lesbians. Word. You ever cracked a lesbian? I've I, I tried to. Man. It's hard. You got to stay focused because they keep hitting you with that I like girl shit. But see, guys, we ignorant. We think, this is us. And all you lesbians out there, this is the problem we think. We think the reason why you're a lesbian is because you didn't fuck us. 
like soon we pull a dick out, it's gonna be like hypnotizing. Like, oh shit, I forgot what that look and feel like. The worst shit is if you try to fuck a lesbian all night and they tell you they're lesbian. I did that shit one night. I was like, okay, let me show you something right here. Let me see something. Let me, I'm gonna show you something. You just feel like if they take a look, shit didn't work. This is still eating pussy. <laughs> Nothing is anything wrong with these pussy. To the kids. Yeah, just take some dick sometimes. Yeah, every once in a while. Let's shake things up a bit. This yeah, like up. have a like a dick amnesty day. Yeah. You know, they do it with the police department. You can have all the guns you want, but it's got that one day where you can just drop it in there. Drop a cock in the box every once in a while. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It could be like the first Friday, call it first Friday fish fry. <laughs> first Friday fish die. Where you don't mess with no chicks uh, fish tacos. Mm -hmm. Do it, let's start a movement, man. A tune for me because it's for a day. Yeah. That's gay. And I dated it. can't be gay every day. Not every day. Every day can't be gay. It can't be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Switch that shit up. It's just sad. I had it. I dated a lesbian chick once and she was the fitted, you know, the fitted cat lesbian. Yeah, oh, yeah the real one. Yeah, the real joy. So she made me feel like I was a bitch in a relationship. Yeah. She was like, yo, son, let me holler you for a second. I was like, what? She was like, yo, this dick shit is kind of new to me. <laughs> Word to everything. <laughs> he was like, word to everything. I ain't with all that. You gonna have to hit this box every once in a while. That's when I had to retire. I was a lesbian for a day. I quit. And you can get more of this if you go to Amazon.com, not Africa.com, but go to Amazon.com and get Ashy the Classy DVD. Well, there it is right there, man. You want to tell the fans anything else? That you get Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Donnell Rollins, all right? And like I always say, you can't just say you're real. It's something you gotta be. Word, son. And can I close out? And if you don't like it, T-I-T-F, take it in the face. Peace to the gods.